the reason we do these very simple exercises, I just call it a pause. It's simply a tiny moment in time uh, in our day that we can just uh, bring our attention to the present moment in an intentional way. The rest of the day we run around like headless chickens doing all sorts of things, worrying about a lot of things, regretting a lot of things, and you will find that um, simply doing something like that for 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes, um, will help you a great deal, um, both in a more of a spiritual vibe, but simply at a basic scientific, uh, psychological <coughs> level. We only have a very limited, what's called, uh, working memory. This is like the RAM on a computer, okay? It's, if you only have one gig of RAM, you can only have the internet and maybe a Word document and a spreadsheet up at the same time. But if you upgrade to eight gigs of RAM, then you can get Photoshop going, you can play some Call of Duty at the same time and check your email. You know, because you've got more space. And this is exactly what happens uh, in our brain with what working memory, okay? Um, the less we are thinking about the future, the less we are thinking about the past, the more we can perceive the present, okay? So, Madreya asked me to uh, do a little talk today about fruit and the virtues of fruit because... Um, for the past few months, he's been doing some really great cleansing of his body, predominantly fruit juice, some fruits, this sort of thing, some herbs, and uh, he's having a great experience. And this is the work that I do in my normal life, especially when I'm not here on the farm, is uh, assisting people. I'm a psychologist by trade, but early on I learned that uh, most of what we call psychological issues have their roots in physiology. Okay, so very early on I started working with people's physiology and instead of addressing, uh, you know, what's making them feel anxious, then maybe we can address the, the weaknesses in different glands of the body that are, um, that are making them less able to deal with stress <coughs> and these sorts of things. So I work... Uh, mainly with people with chronic uh, degenerative illness. Does anyone know what chronic degenerative illness means? Yeah. Uh, an example would be uh, cancer, um, diabetes, arthritis, Crohn's, Parkinson's, okay? Or it's, all the, it's all the diseases that old people get, okay? Now we've only got about 45 minutes now, but I'm going to maybe talk each Friday, and over the next four or five weeks, we'll cover a bunch of stuff. But So, why fruit? That's the question. But in order to talk about that, we really need to have some understandings about the basic nature of the human body. Okay? So is everyone happy and keen to get some basic understandings of the human body? Okay, <laughs> the reason I uh, do this, I do quite a lot of lecturing when I have the time, and the, the reason I'm inspired to do that is that when I grew up, for most of my life, uh, health has appeared to be an extremely complicated and intellectual topic. Okay, you have to, to have any understanding of it, you have to go to university, and compete against thousands of Asians and Indians <laughs> to get into first year medical school. That was how it was at my university. And then you have to do six years or so, uh, and then you have to do about three or four years as a registrar or trainee or whatever. Highly intellectual, okay? But, when we look into nature, we see all these happy, healthy animals that aren't suffering chronic degenerative illness, and uh, seem to be super healthy. At the same time, we claim that they're very stupid. Okay? This is what mainstream science says. So obviously, either the cows in the paddock are geniuses, who are all much smarter than intellectual than medical doctors, or health is actually not that complicated at all. Okay? 
So, when we look at the body, in the most simplistic terms, okay, what do we find? And only people that weren't here four weeks ago can answer. <laughs> what do we find when we look at our knee, when we look at our hand, our hair, our bones, our kidneys, our heart, our skin? I mean, what is it? Cells. Hare Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> it's cells, okay? Does anyone know how many cells make up the body approximately? Uh, about a hundred trillion. Some people say 80 trillion, 90 trillion, something around that. It's a lot, okay? If we counted one every second, I doubt that we'd finish in our lifetime. Okay, about a hundred trillion cells. <clears throat> okay, that's simple enough. Um, but these cells, just like humans, they live in an environment, okay? Now, um, cells, they live in an environment of fluid, okay? And does anyone know... Well, first of all, I'll tell you, I'll give you a hint. There's two main fluids of the human body, okay? These are the vast majority of the fluid in the human body. If I slice your eye open, a little ocular fluid will come out. That's an extra fluid. If I slice your spinal cord open, some spinal... Uh, fluid, will, cerebral spinal fluid will come out. Um, but the vast majority of the body is just cells sitting in two fluids. Okay, what's a guess for uh, what those two fluids are? Blood. Blood is a good one. Okay, everyone knows about blood, it's very famous. Um, and it is the main, main, main focus of the medical establishment. It's the main, main focus of naturopathy. That's, uh, you know, natural, uh, natural health. Okay. And uh, does anyone know what blood does? What's it, what's it in charge of? What role does it play? What does it give to cells? Oxygen. oxygen. It gives oxygen to the cells. It feeds the cells. Okay. Um, but the blood happens, even though it's the main focus of uh, medical thinking, it happens to be that it's only 25%, 25 or 30% of the fluids that are flowing around your cells. Now, a cell, I like to make the analogy that a cell is just like a baby, okay? Because they're pretty helpless, they're pretty vulnerable, right? And... Um, a baby has only three needs, okay? When it's fresh and still warm, it, um, it has three needs, okay? Does anyone, can anyone think of those three needs? Sleep, food, and love. They're good. That's good. I hadn't actually thought about sleep. <laughs> But what's interesting is that more often than not, um, people give these answers and they miss out one uh, really crucial factor. And this is the same thing that medical thinking is missing out on and the same thing that naturopathic thinking is missing out on. Can anyone think of what it is? A baby needs sleep, it needs to be loved, it needs to be fed. Connections. Connection, I think we could put that with love, yeah? Any other ideas? It needs to be cleaned. Okay. Now this is the same with the cell. I'm not sure about sleep. I guess you the cells need rest. We go to sleep, so they have a break. Um, and they certainly need love. Okay. And this is self-love. And um, we love ourselves by treating ourselves well, by kind thoughts, by all this. And this is a huge topic. And typically, Madreya talks about that in his philosophy classes. And this is essentially what this farm is about, bhakti yoga. This is uh, love yoga, okay? And we can love all sorts of things, but the best love, well, I feel, is to love oneself first. Because without self-love, how can you love anything else? Um, so let's focus on the other two. They were feeding and cleaning. Okay, so we've got the blood and that feeds the cells. It brings oxygen and it brings sugar to the cells. Okay, cells run on oxygen 
and sugar. Another word for sugar is carbon. This is where we get the word carbohydrate. Okay? And it's the same stuff that your car runs on, just in a different form. It gets carbon in petrol. Okay? We get carbon in simple sugars. Uh, your lungs are the carburetor, where the oxygen and the blood mix, and uh, we get energy. Okay? Um, but that's only 25% of the story. The other 75% of the fluid is in charge of cleaning the cells. Does anyone know what that fluid is called? Lymphatic fluid. Uh, yes, lymphatic fluid. Okay, and this is the part of the lymphatic system. It's a very unheard of system, uh, much less famous than the blood. Uh, but it is the majority fluid in your body, and it is uh, the great lymph lymphatic system that I think uh, would be great to focus on now. Because as we go down the track here, hopefully you will learn that to get the blood healthy is easy. Okay? It's really simple. The blood self-regulates itself to a huge degree. But to get the lymphatic system, to get the sewage system of the body, uh, clean and working, that can be uh, a bit of a journey, okay? So let's talk a little bit about the lymphatic system and try and tie it up at the end with maybe why fruits uh, are awesome. Okay, the sewage system. Has anyone familiar with the sewage system in their house? Because if you know the sewage system in your house, does everyone know the word sewage? Oh, okay. Um, you know when you go to the toilet? And it goes down the pipe, and it goes out to whatever. And you know when you uh, have a shower in the old dirty yeah. water. What's that in Portuguese? Yeah. Okay. Anyone? Anyone else unfamiliar with sewage system? No. Okay. So. The sewage system in your house, if you understand that, it's the exact same as your body, okay? Imagine that you and your house are exactly the same as a cell in your hand, okay? Uh, say you want to do something, like you want to do some push-ups, just a quick thousand push-ups or something, okay? <laughs> Typically, you probably need some food to do that, okay? Uh, unless you're a master. But most of us, we need some food. And whenever we have food, what else do we need to have? We need to sleep after the food. <laughs> Depends what the food is. But you definitely typically need to have a, uh, a poo. <laughs> let's, talk, let's call it poo, can we? Okay. You need to eliminate. Whenever you consume, you have to eliminate. You do it, your car does it, right? Whenever you put petrol in it to make it go, all this dirty stuff comes out the other end. Uh, the plants do it. They consume nutrition and carbon dioxide. They eliminate oxygen and other chemicals into the, um, into the soil. Um, animals do it. It seems to be that it's a really uh, common trait in nature is consumption and elimination. We love consumption, right? Yeah? We're all about it. As a society, we're crazy on consumption. Not just food, but consuming anything we can get our little paws on. Okay? But we don't really dig elimination. The other side of life. Life is always in dualities. Night and day, girls and boys, consumption, elimination, blood, lymph. Okay? We tend to love one of them, consumption, but we tend to not like elimination. Right? <laughs> no one talks about it. Um, and the same is true in health, it seems, is that everyone talks about consumption, you know, get enough iron, get enough protein, you know, how's your blood analysis, how's your sugar levels. No one talks about the elimination side of life. How many times are you go into the bathroom? Is it satisfying? <laughs> are you, is your lymphatic system eliminated? Are your kidneys working? Okay, no one talks about this, right? So, you're a dude, and you're in your house, you've just had a big meal, and you feel, oh, time for some elimination. <laughs> so you go to the bathroom, you do your business, you press, you press flush, and if you've got a great working sewerage system, 
what happens? It goes down the yeah, it just disappears, right? <laughs> it goes down the pipe. Okay, it goes down this pipe. The exact same thing happens for your cell in your hand when it does a elimination. Okay? We've got these pipes through our body, just like your blood goes through veins, we have things called lymphatic vessels. You don't have to remember the words, just the vibe. Okay? And these wastes will go down these pipes, okay? Now, I think this would be a good time to talk a little bit about chemistry. To a chemist, the whole world is just chemistry. To a physicist, the whole world's just physiology, okay? Uh, physics. <laughs> um, at a chemical level, we have a huge range of chemistry. Um, does anyone remember the periodic table at school? Does anyone remember it? What's the first one? Helium. Beryllium. Boron. Anyone else got that? Carbon. I remember Harry, he likes beer but cup not overflowing. Yeah, Nellie Nave yeah, must always dance around pine glasses. Okay, so there's about, a hundred, there's about 144 or something there. Um, it's getting more by the day. And then we've got all sorts of crazy chemistry that we've created. Okay, so everything you see is just chemistry in different forms. Me, I'm just chemistry on a physical level. Just like this guitar, just like the camera. Okay. But out of all that complicated chemistry that I got 10% in sixth and seventh form chemistry, and then I got scaled up to 20 in my exams. Yeah. But anyway, I know enough chemistry to get by. And um, all this wide spectrum of chemistry can be divided up, like I said before, into two convenient sides, night and day, male, female, uh, blood, lymph. Uh, consumption elimination. Does anyone know the two sides of chemistry? Organic. That's a good point. But no. <laughs> well, that's two other sides. Okay, yeah, great sides. The one I'm thinking of is acid and base. Do you guys know the language for acid and base or alkaline? Acid and pH. It's the pH. We, it's the pH level. It goes from zero which is hello, burn a hole through your foot with a drop, acidic, okay? And then uh, we go up to 14, which is super alkaline. Now, to skip a whole bunch, all you need to know is that your body is alkaline chemistry. It's on the side of alkaline, okay? 7.4 is your blood, 7 is neutral, and 7.4 means it's just on the alkaline side. The other thing to know is that when the air is pure and clean, before we started to mess with it, it was about 80% alkaline chemistry, about 20% acid chemistry, same as our blood. If you pick a ripe fruit off a well-grown tree, it's about 80% alkaline chemistry, 20% acid. If you go for a swim in clean ocean, about 80% alkaline chemistry, 20% acid chemistry. So what we see is that this world that we live in is predominantly alkaline chemistry, okay? It's a, that's the female side of chemistry, it's the nurturing, it's the hydrating, it's the anti-inflammatory side of chemistry. If you're talking about having a drink of water to hydrate yourself, what you're saying is bringing some alkaline chemistry into your body, okay? The first thing that happens if you go to hospital after a car crash, does anyone know what happens? Saline. They put a saline, a salt water drip into you, okay? It's like they tap you into the ocean because that's some nice uh, alkaline chemistry and it's anti-inflammatory. Okay, so that's what you need to know. And the other thing you need to know is that when your cell does a poo, um, that is acid chemistry, just like when you do a poo. Just like, if we go back to the baby analogy, I like to mention to people that it really doesn't matter how much money and how good a quality, organic, just boom, superfood, uh, whatever food that you feed a baby, right? It really doesn't matter how good that food is. If you're not changing its nappies, what happens? It gets a red bum. It's called nappy rash. What that is, is it's burning itself. 
It's burning in its own waste. Okay? And this is what happens to every single cell in your body if the sewerage system is not working. Okay? So, when your cell does a little poo, it comes out at about a 3 pH, which means it's the same acidity, roughly, as a Coca-Cola. Now, if you, uh, put a, one of, if you rip one of your teeth out and put it in a glass of Coke overnight, it pretty much disappears. Okay? This is the corrosive, the pulling apart, the burning nature of acids. And they're not bad, they're not evil. They are simply in charge of ripping chemistry apart so that God can build some new stuff with it, okay? No one calls the car wrecker evil. Or the builder, when he rips out all the walls of your house before putting new awesome ones in, okay? It's just, that's the ripping apart side of chemistry. So you can see that if you have a mouthful of Coca-Cola, it takes about 30 seconds before it really, you know, starts to burn, starts to irritate, okay? You put a nail in a glass of Coke, you know, it starts to get pulled apart super fast. And this is what happens if your cell in your hand does a poo and it's not moved away super fast, okay? Just be the same if uh, you don't change the nappies on a baby. It'll burn real fast, okay? So, that 3 pH poo goes up these uh, lymph vessels and in your house after it's gone along those pipes where do those pipes take it anyone know i know we're totally sewage disconnected plant. from uh, our sewage system what's that the house? Yeah. out of the house yeah the and where does it go okay in brazil it goes out on the street under the street, yeah. Yeah. Well, the the huge part, yeah. 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 yeah, and and that takes it to what um, we call a uh, what do we call it? Syrup facility. A, a septic tank. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. When you're on a farm, a septic yeah. tank is right outside. If you're in a town, it's a big centralized septic tank. Now, does anyone know what happens at a septic tank? What are septic tanks full of? They're full of friendly little friends. Does anyone know what they're called? Bacteria. Yeah. Bacteria. Now, bacteria gets a real bad rap, especially in modern medical thinking. Everything gets blamed on bacteria and antibiotics will take care of your bacteria problems. But bacteria are actually super friendly dudes. They live in the sewage system and they break down waste. So our septic tanks in our body are called lymph nodes. Does anyone know what a lymph node is? Yeah. You have lots here, you have lots here, you have lots here. They're all through your body, you got maybe two or three hundred of them. The famous ones are here. A lot of breast cancer is coming from this direction. Uh, lots here. Um, okay, and they're full of bacteria and they break that waste down. Okay? Where does it go next after the septic tank? Well, if you're in a city, it goes to a filtration factory. If you're on a farm, it goes to a hole in the ground with some hay bales in it. Okay, and this is to filter it before it goes out to sea. Now we have uh, three giant filtration factories in our body. Does anyone know what they're called? Kidney. Yeah. Kidney. 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 Not liver. No, no. There's two. You got two of them. What is the bus? I don't know what a bus is. Appendix? Anyway, you've got these two kidneys. Those are your two main filtration factories. But you've also got a third one, which is your skin. Okay? This is why we sweat. And this is why uh, sometimes we have bad skin because we're moving these wastes, we're filtering it out through our skin. What typically happens is that if these kidneys are not working well, you'll push waste out through your skin. So this is the great lymphatic system, this is the sewage system of your body, and I think we'll talk about it a bit more uh, next time. But the reason that uh, 
The reason that people experience chronic degenerative illness has a huge amount of its cause, the causative factor of it, being that their sewage system is not working well. Okay? There is an epidemic throughout humanity of congested sewage systems. Okay? Has anyone blown their nose and had a bunch of mucus come out? Yeah? <laughs> Has anyone gone out? Uh, spat out a big lump of mucus? Oh, yeah. Okay. When we talk about mucus, we're talking about lymphatic fluid. They're the same thing, okay? If you put your hand in your mouth, and you feel how it's very slippery. It's very slippery inside your mouth. Does everyone want to do it? <laughs> this is called the mucosa. Okay? This is a thin layer of mucus, and it covers every piece of your body. And it's a protective layer. Okay? This is lymphatic. This is the, the mucus. Okay? Now, when we go and spit it out, and when we blow it out our nose, does anyone notice that it comes in a rainbow variety of colours? <laughs> has anyone had, has anyone had uh, clear, has anyone blown their nose and had really clear, watery kind of fluid come out? Yeah? Okay, this is just easily moving lymphatic fluid, okay? This is how it should be, okay? Uh, has anyone had it and they blow it out and it's a bit thick and it's white? Any takers? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is um. This is a more acute situation. This is a more congested lymphatic fluid. Okay. Uh, has anyone delved into the yellows? Yeah, we got some amens. Got some yellows. What about uh? What about green? Anyone had a green? Has anyone? We're going further down the further down the path of more congestion, more thickening, more coagulation. Okay, um, has anyone hit the browns? Yeah. Has anyone? <laughs> this is really chronic lymph. This has been in there. It's been congested for a while. You know. Has anyone gone into black? No. Yeah. no? Okay. This is the color of death. Okay, this is degeneration. If you're going into black, then give me a call. <laughs> you see black a lot with people that are dying of uh, stomach cancers or this sort of thing. They'll be spitting up black crap. Um, personally, I've had a, I haven't had black. When I, uh, I was doing some really hard juicing and I was on the herbs and I was really hitting the detoxification, my tongue went brown, you know, as it was pushing this chronic mucus out. I've had, I haven't had this, but I've had a lot of clients with brown armpits, you know, just brown seeping out, different stuff like this, okay? Now, I, I use the word detoxification. Now, this is kind of what I'm talking about. This is what I do, and um, or what I assist with people. Um, but it's got a funny, the name has got a funny kind of uh, image around it. Because I've walked around Byron Bay, and I've seen, um, there's a shop there specializing in detoxification. And it sells little patches that you can stick on your ankle. Detox patches, okay? This isn't what I'm talking about. If anyone talks to you about detoxification and doesn't talk about the lymphatic system and the kidneys, they're not talking about anything that's real, okay? It's similarly, if someone talks to you about spirituality, and doesn't use the word surrender, okay? They're not talking about anything that's real. They're probably selling you something that you don't need, okay? Detoxification is simply the process of moving congested mucus out of the body. When you're blowing your nose, you're detoxing, you know? So, fruits and detoxification. Have we got time for this? Yeah. Fruits and detoxification. The reason that... Um, yeah, there's so much. Where to start? 
Fruits are awesome. Okay. <laughs> How much time do we have for this? Take what you need. Yeah. Okay. Um, fruits are awesome. <laughs> amen. Okay. Amen. Do I have another amen? Amen. 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 Okay. <laughs> have you ever looked? Oh man, where to start? Okay, quickly. Do you look like a tiger? No. No. A tiger is a carnivore, or a lion, or a cat. Okay. Big sharp teeth, big claws, scary looking. No one really likes to eat them. Even meat eaters don't really like to eat carnivores. True. <coughs> Yeah. Okay? Um, yeah, scary dudes. We don't look anything like them. Does anyone look like them? Okay, not on the surface and not internally. Okay? First of all, they've got big teeth, but even if you look at the pipe that goes from your mouth to your booty, okay, uh, they have a very short one, about three times the length of their spine. Because if you put meat into a 40 degree room that's really wet and dark, what happens? Goes off. Goes bad, super fast. And this is what happens when meat goes into your 40 degree little oven that's really wet. It goes off super fast. That's why carnivores have a really short digestive tract so that they can get it in. They have really strong stomach acids that break it down and then they get it out as fast as they can. Okay. We don't look like them. Do we look like a cow or a horse or a giraffe or a zebra? Some people do. <laughs> Some people. Most of us not. Oh, I missed one. Okay, these guys are herbivores. Oh, I missed it. Gosh, let's go back. It's easy to say we're not carnivores. Most people in the world will say, How's, yeah, we're not carnivores, we're omnivores. We eat everything, right? Has anyone heard that? Yeah, yeah the omnivores dilemma, the famous book. Okay, the truth is that, yeah, we can eat everything, okay? Yeah, you can eat whatever and get away with it for a time, but we're not really designed to. An omnivore is a dog, some beers, most beers, uh, chickens, pigs, a lot of birds. We don't look anything like them, okay? Okay, so a lot of uh, people will say, no, we're, uh, I'm vegetarian, you know, on a spiritual path. I'm compassionate, okay? And that's great. I love that. And they'll say, I'm a herbivore. Maybe that's why Hare Krishnas love cows. But they're not herbivores. They don't look like the cows. They love the cows, but they don't look like them, okay? And neither do we, okay? Um, we don't have the teeth that the cows have that can chew on grass all day, these massive big teeth. We don't have five stomachs. Herbivores have between three and seven stomachs, typically. They eat their food, they spew it back up, they chew it again, they swallow it back down. Their digestive tract is about 27, I think, times the length of its spine, because it takes a long time to break down the fiber in grass and in vegetables. Okay? That's not us. If we look into the wild, who do we look like? Monkeys. Mon Monkeys. Apes. What's that? Eggs. Apes. Oh, apes. Yeah. We, call, we look like primates, the primate family. And scientists will say, yes, Homo sapiens are primates. Okay? Now, primates, the vast majority of them, unless they've been bred in captivity and forced to eat meat. Um, in the natural world, they're not carnivores, they're not omnivores, they're not herbivores. What are they? Frugivores. frugivores. And frugivores eat uh, fruits, leafy green herbs, and some nuts and seeds. Some primates in the wild will eat maybe 3% animal protein, okay? They'll eat a little rodent once in a while, okay? Uh, many of them are strictly vegetarian, vegan, uh, but some of them eat a little bit of meat or eggs or something like that. Now, interesting story, I went to the Wellington's... It starts before that. I went to the Bangkok Zoo. Has anyone done that? It's a horrible experience. Don't ever do it. And I swore I'm never going to a zoo again. I saw a primate there, it was a chimpanzee, or no, an orangutan, 
and I was looking at it, and it was the first time I had a look at monkeys up close, and I realized how humane it looked, you know, and its features, and then the look in its eyes, and it was sitting in this tiny little cage, and it was holding the cage, and it was just banging its head against the bars. So not hard, you know, just... So I swore, man, I'm never going to the zoo again. But I went back on my oath. And about six years later, I went to the Wellington Zoo, which was a really positive experience in New Zealand. And I met a bunch of chimpanzees. And if anyone's seen chimpanzees, the first thing you'll notice is that they're hella ripped. Yeah? Hella ripped, okay? And they're strong. They can rip you to pieces. They don't because they're chilled out and they just eat fruit. And you'll find that the frugivores and the, and the herbivores are really peaceful dudes. Okay? And you'll also notice it as we go down the track that people that eat this way tend to be pretty peaceful as well. Not across the board, but, you know, as a general rule. Um, but they're hella ripped. And I often say that if you want health advice, if you want to get healthy, don't, you don't need to um, go to a health teacher, a human, you know, and ask them for help. Just look at some chimpanzees and do what they do. You know, spend more time climbing trees, eat more bananas, clean each other more, <laughs> Ch chill out, you know. Be in the sun. Yeah, right? They sit around and in the morning they have a little chat and they clean each other and, you know, love and contact. <laughs> okay, so I asked the lady, how do you, hey lady, how do you keep um, these chimps in such good shape? Oh man, there's so much to say. I saw some really great humane, like human contact between the chimps too, you know, mothers hugging each other, talking about their little kids, all this, you know, it was beautiful. But I said, how do you keep, keep them so lean and ripped and healthy? And she said, what I have to do is I have to feed them 80% ripe fruits. She said ripe. Uh, about, um, about 18 or 15% I feed them uh, leafy green herbs and I give them... Uh, she said she gave them a cooked chicken every so often. I guess this is protein thinking getting out of hand. But chimpanzees, I'm not sure if they're totally vegetarian or if they're these dudes that eat a rodent once in a while, but we're looking at about 3 to 5% uh, dense proteins, okay? So I thought that was interesting. And uh, that maybe if uh, we want the health of those primates in the wild, then maybe this would be a good blueprint to uh, copy our lives off, okay? Because in the wild, you don't see a primate with cancer. You don't see one with diabetes or Parkinson's or uh, schizophrenia or anything like this. The only time that you see chronic degenerative illness in animals is when they are brought into captivity. They're domesticated. Does everyone know the word domesticated? Try to domesticate you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And so that's interesting because we can look around us at humans and realize, oh, we're actually the most domesticated animal of all. You know, we've out sheep the sheep. Um, so fruits. Does anyone have any qualms against fruit? Because I could talk a lot about things, but maybe someone's got an initial question. Like someone might say, I can't eat fruit. I got, uh, it's got too much sugar. Has anyone heard that before? Yeah? yeah. yeah? Okay, um, so we'll talk about the sugar question. Every cell in your body runs on simple sugars. Okay? Simple, when you're talking about the body, simple sugar means uh, small sugar. Okay? Tiny little one. Because your body runs on very simple chemistry. Um, and we run on simple sugars. This is a bit of science for you, but I think it's within everyone's grasp. Does anyone know what the three simple sugars are that are available to us? Glucose, fructose, glucose, 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 galactose. Galactose is a dairy sugar, and the vast majority of humans uh, cease having the enzymes to digest dairy by the time they're about two. Conveniently, that's about the time you stop breastfeeding. And uh, conveniently, about the time that every other species on Earth stops drinking milk as well. Um, so we've got glucose. This is a vegetable sugar. Okay, primarily a vegetable sugar. 
It uh, is great. However, it does require insulin to be taken to the cell. Okay, this is the issue with diabetes, not having insulin. Okay. Fructose is the cleanest of them all because it doesn't need nothing. It's just boom, straight to the cell. Done. Get some energy. Okay? So, for people who say that it's got too much sugar fruit, I can't, you know, it's no good. Um, if you're not going to eat sugar, what are you going to eat? Sure, your body can run on fat when it converts it to sugar. This is what's called uh, mitosis. No. Ketosis. Ketosis. Uh, when you're fasting, when you stop eating uh, for any reason, you go into ketosis. And this is when you're running on fats. It takes about three days of not eating any sugar to go into ketosis. And you can sustain this for a while uh, before you start consuming protein. And that's called starvation. So that leads me into uh, another thing that many people will say. Where do you get your protein? Well... Your body doesn't run on protein. The only time it uses protein for energy is when you're in starvation. Okay? You need to when build protein. How's yeah, you do? Look at this dude, he's got some good protein. <laughs> protein is uh, used for structure in our body. Defense. Um, yeah, and it's used for some carriers and <coughs> some other complicated things. But, you don't build this protein out of cow protein, okay? This is the same idea as eating someone else's heart to make you brave. It's the same idea as eating someone's brain to make you smart. Yeah? Eating someone else's muscle to make me strong. It doesn't work like that. Um, you need to build human protein, okay? So, how do you build human protein? Well, you build it out of these small things called amino acids. And fruit is full of amino acids. Leafy green herbs are full of amino acids. In fact, if you say, I need protein, and have some steak, your body's going to go to a lot of effort to break those big proteins down into small amino acids. It'll break the cow protein down, or it'll break the spinach protein down into small amino acids, and then it'll build Rohan protein. Okay, so when you when someone says, "Well, where do you get your protein?" Well, I don't. You know, I'm not really seeking that. I get lots of amino acids, and I build some lean, green, pristine, serene protein. <laughs> um, so, I think that's probably all we have time for. But I think Madreya has uh, bought a bunch of fruit, and I think he's kind of hoping that you might dip into your own tiny pockets and. Uh, get some more fruit and bring it to the community and uh, for those of you that would like to experiment then maybe try spending a day or two or three or a week uh, eating fruits and herbs. When I say fruits and herbs, tomato is a fruit, zucchini is a fruit, cucumber is a fruit, uh, eggplant is a fruit, pumpkin. pumpkin is a fruit, it's a pretty tough one. Avocado. Avocado is a fruit. When I talk about herbs, um, uh, celery is an herb, spinach is an herb, kale is an herb, uh, dandelion is an herb. In fact, the only things that we eat that are really vegetables, whatever that word means, is probably things like cauliflower, broccoli, yeah, uh, carrots, uh, potatoes. It's the legumes. It's these things.